What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name is Matt. Behind me, this Ventrac 4500 I just got. I have seen these things mowing crazy hillsides along highways and commercial properties for a long time, and uh, always thought it'd be pretty darn cool to run one. So, uh, yeah, now I got one. <laughs> I needed a good mower for out here at the farm, something that'll weave around in and out of the trees. And then there are some hillsides out here that I'd like to keep tamed down. So uh, I think this might just be the unit to do it. Now, of course, most of you guys know that I have the uh, brush mower that goes in the front of the skid steer. And that thing does, you know, decent for being a piece of Chinesium. It does decent at uh, cutting down heavy brush but uh, it's really nothing you want to cut your yard with or anything like that. And plus when you go into areas and start turning around, especially getting in and in around trees and everything nice and tight, it kind of tears up the ground. So I, I'm hoping that this thing leaves uh, pretty much no trace. And because it articulates, uh, I, I believe that will be the case. I don't think it's gonna hardly disturb the ground whatsoever whenever we're running it. Pop the hood here. Show you what she's got for power unit. It's a Kubota. This is a little three cylinder D902. Uh, I can't remember quite how many horsepower this thing is. 18, 23, something like that. I'll probably put it here on the screen. I was told the hour meter has been replaced on it before. Like right now we're showing 95.8 hours, so that's absolutely nothing. But uh, I think the guy said it has close to a thousand on it. But uh, yeah, I guess enough chit chat. Let's, uh, let's go try this thing out. Oh, I guess we should talk about the deck first. It's not like your average lawnmower deck, okay? This, this deck is like the uh, brush cutter deck. I think they call it a tough cut. So I think this deck is uh, rated for like one inch trees and minus, but uh, we'll probably push that a bit. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty loaded up. She's got, uh, what, two remotes in the back, two in the front. Pretty well equipped here. And there is a host of other attachments that you can get for these things, so. I don't know. We'll see how this deck does and uh, maybe have to get a uh, actual finish mower deck if this one doesn't cut the grass grass nice enough. Most of what I'm gonna be mowing out here, I don't really care about. It's mainly just keeping the brush at bay, but, but eventually there's gonna be an actual yard out here where I build my house and I wanna keep that looking pretty decent. This thing got a service right before I got it, so it should be pretty much ready to go. It's a really weird feeling to have something that's just turnkey and go to work. It's, uh, it's kind of nice. I kind of like the way this feels. It's like a little tingly feeling. So this thing is your forward and your backward. That's your park brake. This thing here is your forward and your backward. And it's also the hydraulic up and down for the attachment, just like so. Um, this guy here, is connected to this thing. I don't know exactly what it does. It also has a valve connected to it. A storage area over here. We've got a beer holder, that's good. Remote valves are over here. Steering wheel, of course. We've got a high and low range over here. PTO, headlights. I think that's about it. Oh, there's also a forward and backward control down here on the ground. You can use your foot to control it. So yeah, let's go mow something, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, this seems like a good place to set in at.
Well, 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 as many of you very well know, my property has some drainage issues. Now, it didn't used to be this way. It was poor planning and inexperience on my part. When I started clearing for the driveway and put the driveway in, I should have just went ahead and cleared it wider and put some good bar ditches in along both sides. As I got plenty of comments back in the day when I did those videos about that. And uh, yeah, you guys were right. But I'm trying to rectify the situation now. I graded this whole area out last year that was just a swamp. Not, not literally a protected swamp or anything, but just low-lying, very muddy, just like this little spot is right here now. So it's gotten better, and I'm going to try to keep this mowed this year, which will let the sun hit it and try to dry it out better. And hopefully by mid-August, this is dry enough to where I can come down through here with old Christine the grader and really cut some nice ditches in. But I can run the tractor through there right now and make a big muddy mess, but... Uh, Having duels on this thing, it's like zero ground pressure. So this thing is uh, very lightweight. I don't mean it literally has zero ground pressure, but it's very, very light on its feet. And uh, it can walk through here and cut this down nicely without making a big mess. So we can go ahead and try to mow all this stuff on the right side of the driveway here now. And uh, try to dry this area out a bit. <laughs>
had our first break down here, albeit not a really big deal. I discovered a couple great features of this thing. I hadn't paid any attention at all to these front caster wheels on this mower deck, but they've been working really good. I tell you what, they're pretty darn heavy duty. I've been pushing logs out of the way and everything else with them. But uh, I thought they were pneumatic, but they're actually solid rubber, which is great. They're also made in the USA, which is another thing I love to see. The bad thing here is that this one has done rolled off the rim. So let's go figure out how we can fix that because uh, without this thing, we're just gonna tear up the rim. Yeah, that's a heck of a squeeze, I don't know. I think we're gonna have to employ some machinery for this. All right, I have absolutely no idea if this is gonna work or not, but uh, I've really got nothing to lose here. Well, I mean, I could ruin the entire rim, but I don't know how else to get this thing back on here. I'm gonna try not to push on the outside of the rim because that part will bend easily. I think I got it. Maybe. Don't spring back out of there. I don't want to say it's as good as new, but it's uh, as good as we're going to get. All right, back to work we go.
I'm not sure how well you guys can tell, but this is actually like a four foot pit right here. It's a four foot straight drop. This little teeny ravine that runs down through here for this small stream. You don't want to go in that. And uh, wow, I can't believe how close I was able to get to the edge without slipping. To try to start taking this machine over the hillside here and clearing off some of this area but uh, it's really hard to show uh, steepness of a grade in, in a video so I'm gonna do my best here at some different camera angles try and show off this isn't super steep in this area but I'm gonna keep progressing into steeper and steeper terrain so hopefully at some point you're gonna be able to tell we're on some steep ground
right, so as I said, this is steep, but it's not crazy steep here. But I did have that thing kind of hung up for a second, and uh, I was kind of told that that was like the only way they, they get hemmed up. Uh, what I did, I came across the slope like this and made a turn up the hill. And when I did, I kind of creeped back and forth a little bit. And as you're going across the hill like this, you know, gravity's pulling you down. So you slowly kind of creep a little bit while you're repositioning. And that tree right there, that little sapling, got in between the articulation points. So I had to just kind of keep working myself back and forth until I was able to kind of crab walk around the tree and uh, get the tree on the high side so I could maneuver out of it. All right, this is quite a bit steeper than the last area. I don't think I'll be able to make it all the way up over the top, but what I'm gonna try to do is get up there to the fill area. That's all the fill I put in for my building right up there. I'm gonna try to get up there and execute a U-turn and come back down the hill. Well, here's how you get yourself in a pickle on these hillsides. So the way the machine's positioned, the front end's pulling that direction. And I can't just go straight up the hill because I ran over this log that I couldn't see. 
and I'm not hung up on it, but because it's so steep, I'm just sliding, you know. So I can only back up like maybe a foot and a half, two feet, and the rope, the rocks is going to hit that tree. And that side's already up against that tree. And don't forget, this is all steeper than it looks on camera. So yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try to get out of here, and worst come to worst, I'm going to have to pull it out. But uh, so far, every time I've gotten a predicament like this, I've been able to wiggle it out. So we'll give it a shot. I really I really had to work to get to you guys on that one this part of the hill here is so steep that I was spinning coming up it uh, I was losing traction because this isn't like uh, real tightly compacted topsoil like it would be if this was mowed regularly and had grass growing on it uh, the vegetation is much looser here and the soil is kind of sandy and has a lot of small rocks in it about two three inch rocks so Everywhere I'm spinning, I'm gonna earth in a whole bunch of rocks like this, and it's not very good traction. So I know the cameras never do anything justice like this, but I hope you can tell it's pretty darn steep. And uh, the best way I was actually able to mow this is 
kind of work across on a slight angle the whole time which uh, the same principle applies for dozers just going straight up and straight down I mean you can tackle some steep stuff but actually to work to work a hillside like that it's kind of easier to take a slight angle and kind of seesaw your way back and forth across and down and uh, that's what I'm doing here the trick is just going to be not sliding into and getting hung up on any trees on the way down so yeah it's uh it's really impressive be, even as steep as this is going across it on a side does not feel sketchy at all it feels very very secure like i'm not even remotely concerned about flipping the thing it's just the sliding aspect of it just controlling the slide and again that's more to do with the ground i'm on than anything After having this thing for a few weeks now, I don't know that I want to live without one. <laughs> this thing is fantastic for out here. I have zero turns at home for my lawn, and uh, you would destroy a zero turn out here trying to mow the terrain that I'm mowing. Even the flat stuff that the zero turn is capable of operating on, it's just so bumpy and there's hidden stumps and sticks and stuff everywhere. Uh, you would just destroy it. There's there's not a zero turn on the market that I'm aware of that could remotely handle the tasks that I've been throwing at this thing regularly. And it just eats it right up. Uh, when we were mowing those banks out front, down by my little uh, culvert there, I couldn't believe I was able to ease over these hills and then just back up out of it, you know. And, and if you slip, <laughs> you're going into the into the pit. So. It, this thing is beyond sure-footed. It's very impressive. If you guys have any experience with these, if any of you guys watching uh, have a Ventrac, let me know what you think of it, how it's been, long-term durability and whatnot for you. Uh, I know that this is made right in Ohio, so that's uh, that's nice. That's my neighbor state, so it's always good when I can buy something that's uh, made in America. If you guys know of any must-have attachments for these things, uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what kind of attachments I should keep an eye out for. It might not be one of my biggest pieces of equipment, but it's uh, it's definitely going to be a, a handy little unit to have around here for sure. Anyways, I think I'll wrap this one up here. If you guys like the video, do me a big favor. Smash that like button down below. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and showing you guys the content that you want to see. Also, if you're not already, what are you waiting for? You might as well hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any future videos. I've got a lot of really cool projects and uh, videos in the works and they should be coming up very soon. If you're a fan of the channel and you want to help support it and you want to look good doing it, head on over to dieselcreek.com. There's a link down in the description. We've got hats, t-shirts, stickers, koozies, all kind of good stuff over there. You can uh, help support the channel and look good at the same time. With that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Me and the Ventrack are out of here. <laughs>